recorded. Yep, should be recorded. Yep, very good. Great. So, welcome everyone. The subcommittee, uh, housing subcommittee of the planning board, September twenty fifth. Time is seven oh four. Uh, I suppose we should do a roll call of who's here. So, um, Fred Harwell. Fred is here. Okay. Bruce Coldham. I'm here. I, uh, Jesse Major, am here. And Karen Winter is not here yet. Not sure if she's coming. Okay. So, um, announcements on first agenda item. Either of you two have an announcement or Nate, do you have any announcement for us? Uh, I don't think so, no. Okay. I thought I mentioned, I mean, you guys got the email too about the overlay going to, went through council, right? Back to planning board. So that's good. I suppose we'll have a he hearing on that at some point. Yes. There Hold seems board. to be a, there seems to be a, um, a, uh, I, had, I had dinner with Kathy Shane last night and uh, it seems that uh, there's some concern that the, the big Y should be pulled out of the overlay. Uh, we'll have to. We'll have to. We'll have to. Well, everybody will have to think about that. Yes, you mean so it doesn't go away somehow? Within, yes, within I think. I think the thought is uh, hasn't been expressed this way, but it's it's my conclusion that the thought is that uh, uh, a supermarket is is not the highest and best use building in in uh, in in these in the way we would be creating the zone because it's one of those uses that requires a lot of parking. And uh, then that takes away from developable buildings, unless you put the parking under buildings or underground, which is obviously more expensive than probably a, a supermarket is likely to invest in, in uh, in Amherst anyway. So I yeah. think that's the concern that uh, it would uh, drive away um, a retail store. Yeah. Yep. Fred. Uh, yeah, I um, I read the. Uh article in today's gazette with some alarm uh, that there seemed to be uh, little understanding at the council level as to uh, really what we were trying to accomplish. I didn't, I, uh, the, uh, I didn't see anything that, that they talked about uh, being worried about a student dormitory. And I didn't see any uh, commentary about the impact on the uh, on the market for that is caused by this this kind of demand, um, mm. which is what we're trying to address here. So I I I I was uh, quite astonished, frankly, at the at the commentary that I read in today's paper uh, and. One thing we can simply do is to diminish, as Bruce said, we can diminish the coverage of the overlay district if necessary, but uh, I, I'm not sure that it's necessary anyway. Yeah, yeah so I, I think that, um, yeah, I mean, staff is already looking at what are some other solutions. And so one might be having a, um, some different standards and conditions Uh, I think we lost you, Nate. Yeah. Uh, just for the record, Karen Winter joined us at 7.06 p.m. Hi, Karen. Fred, that was in the print version or online? Because I, I got the print one. I didn't see it today. Maybe I didn't look carefully enough. Oh, you're muted. <laughs> oh, I don't know how I missed that. Yeah. Maybe, maybe my wife took that section. Well, maybe the thing that we can think for the future of us here or for the planning board generally is uh, that it sounds like a, a an op-ed piece will be necessary at some point, uh, and it uh, we could uh, we could uh, contemplate um, an op-ed piece that we would all sign. Uh, maybe the whole bloody board signs it. Yeah, yeah, or, um, or, or something or certainly could, we could generate as a subcommittee yeah. and then bring it to the board. Sure, that's right. yeah. So yeah. if yeah, if I'm if I'm um, audible, so what I was saying is yeah. maybe we have different design standards within that area. So a hundred percent of the ground floor has to be 
retail or non-residential. And that way, you know, it's a different mixed use requirement, but, you know, no one would then come in and think, oh, well, I'm, I have to, I'm going to create a big building and have a whole vacant first floor. The idea would be try to incentivize big Y to either be part of the redevelopment or it stays. Yeah. Um, well, I think the other problem, Nate, is that it's hard to imagine big Y surviving a two-year, three-year development process. They would not be there and, and whether they would come back is uh, highly questionable. Um, I, I would think, I mean, certainly I wouldn't assume that you could uh, 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 develop a, number, a building and keep them there because of the period of time between when they would have to move out and before they would be able to move back in again. Yeah, yeah, I think it is a good, you know, good consideration. Um, I mean, I, I, my response to council was, well, if I were big Y and I knew there could be hundreds of new customers, I, I would be a little patient before moving, but. Um, that's uh, that's true. We don't know where they get, but you're right. I mean, they're, they're one of a number of stores down, this, you know, that people drive to and uh, they might uh, suddenly have a lot more people who would be walking to them. It's yeah. interesting. It's interesting. Uh, you know, I, 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 are are we raising hands or can I just oh, I read article and I was totally shocked to hear the concern about Big Y because Big Y with so many customers close by would thrive like nothing. We're all tr longing for grocery stores you can walk to. So that that really uh, kind of shocked me. That reasoning. Did I miss something? Well, yes, I think so, because it's not a big why that's uh, in the mix here. It's people who, your first question would be, uh, who owns big why? Uh, is it big why? And the answer likely is it's not big why who owns big why. Big why would not want to have their, their capital invested in buildings. They'd rather have it invested in all of the infrastructure that gets them, you know, groceries delivered and stuff. So my the, the concern would probably be that Big Y would lose control of that site because uh, there's a higher and better use. So that's it's not well, that Big Y would run away. It's that Big Y would be forced out for one reason or another. Yeah. Yeah. So clearly, we should consider that to allay the concerns. I think as a as a committee and maybe like you said, Bruce, for the whole planning board. Yeah. Brad, is your hand still up, or is that from before? I'm sorry, could you, I didn't hear the question. Is your hand still up or is that from before? Oh, so my bad. Gotcha. Yeah. No problem. I, I, with any four of us, we can uh, yeah, probably I, have I a conversation, I think, if, we, if we're if we reasonably uh, considerate of each other's. Yes, agreed. Agreed. Okay, so maybe, um, well, let's see if that comes up at planning board and then Certainly for the, if it does, or actually if it doesn't, maybe we can think about writing a response or some kind of op-ed, like you said, Bruce. For, yeah, I think new... Fred's point was a good one. I didn't hear the meeting and I didn't talk about this with Kathy, but it's very clear that we were, uh, there, was a, there, was a, there was an important goal that we were trying to address here. You know, that it, it, I, I think the narrative is powerful and important that says um, two councillors came to this uh, uh, board with uh, uh, concerned about this, concerned about something and with a solution concept for how to address it. We spent six months uh, discussing their solution concepts. We spent no months discussing their goals and objectives because they were, they were, they were instantly accepted. Um, but we did turn down and then we had a, 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 you know, a, a process of our own that suggested that because these were important things and because we disagreed with the way in which they had proposed, we felt incumbent to do our thinking about this. And this is how we came. We, we thought that not changing the zoning in this way, but allowing large volume housing in certain specific places. And we happened to think we found, we found one. And so this, and then, so, you know, we basically described that, uh, that story about how we got to where we were and why. And so as, as Fred said, um, if uh, the planning board were not uh, instantly made aware of uh, what's uh, the 
primary objective of this, um, then uh, we, uh, you know, the presentation wasn't was lacking. <laughs> and and if it's and in insofar as it may have been lacking, then uh, the, uh, the it means the conversation about this won't be focused where we want it to be focused. So we should make sure that. Uh, he, uh, one of my friends, who's uh, no longer alive, but was in the PR and advertising and and, and the and the story business, um, would say that getting the A material, as he calls it, right, is very important because if you don't get it right immediately, it's hard to it's hard to go back and correct it. So we have to make sure that uh, that the important stuff is is. Uh, is what people is in the first paragraph of the conversation about this every time it's reported. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a memo to town council. I'll I'll forward that uh, to everyone. I, I thought it was sent to the planning board, but I'll I'll get that mm. um, to everyone. But you 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 uh, you agree with my drift, Nate? That that this that we have to be every time this project is discussed. It has to in the first sentence or the first paragraph of the conversation, every time we open our mouth has to be what Fred said. The reason why yeah, we're doing I, this it has to no, be always there. To, yeah. I think it's really important because they, you know, they were just, they got stuck on like talking about um, council to ask a little bit about parking, about is this going to be all students and Oh my goodness, that would be really bad. And Oh, big why. And I think they're all good considerations. And, but like the narrative really is, well, we're trying to add, I said it at the beginning that we're trying to add housing here as part of maybe a multi-part solution for housing across town, but this is, you know, a really necessary step. But I think, it, you know, yeah. I think we have to also, kind of repeat that. I think if, if someone, if someone on council says, but is this all, is this going to be all students? That would be terrible. I think that should be taken head on. Yeah. Why do you think that would be terrible? Councillor right. so-and-so right. just, just think about it for a moment and explain why is that terrible? Um, because oh, but, but I guess it's clear that... that we have a problem we have to solve. And maybe we're not intending that the total solution here is, but we shouldn't start with the idea that what we think is a primary candidate for the housing is somehow um, uh, run, that we run away from that. We shouldn't. Yeah, but who's at the town council meeting to make that counterpoint, Chris, when that comes up? Um, whoever's presenting the uh, who's ever whoever's presenting this to, if it's on the count, then we would have to brief certain councillors, people we know, uh, and make sure that uh, well, at least they're aware and they can choose them whether they engage appropriately. But I think uh, you know that's our job. If we want this to move forward, we have to keep the story simple and we have to keep it direct. Uh, you know, and the A material has to be front and center all the time. Brad, go ahead. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> thank you, Bruce. Uh, and I just want to add one other aspect that should be also part of that conversation. You, you, you're correct, uh, and that is that uh, uh, UMass has made it very, very clear uh, in the meeting that they had. In, with us at one of our in-person meetings in, in the town room. As far as I'm concerned, UMass has made it very clear that uh, they are in no hurry to build more student housing. So the, UMass is not going to solve this problem. Uh, they are going sure. to expand their uh, student uh, uh you know, uh, population, and they are not going to house them. And, you know, and... Uh, oh, more than they already gonna, are. That's going to create... Uh, that's what's driving the market here. Yeah. I mean, more than they already are, Fred, because uh, what we all have heard them say is UMass regards itself as being um, uh, in the... In, in the, in the favorite sun status or whatever it is in that they think they're doing better than most universities in terms of the amount of students that they're housing so which is maybe yeah. true but it doesn't but it still means that we've got eight thousand students or something that are looking for housing off campus 
maybe that's undergraduate students. I, I get all these numbers mixed up, but it's a lot. And we know that there's more than we can provide the yeah. way it's currently being provided. I don't, I don't disagree. And at the same time, uh, I need to be a little careful because my other role, right? So full disclosure, right? I'm now partly in the vice chancellor's office, my job at UMass. Huh. So the we is me also, the, the them is me also to some yes, extent. Yes, and it's, it's in another version of it is Doug. <laughs> yes, correct. Um, all, all I want to say is that they are... <laughs> UMass is aware it's it's a big issue and there there are uh, not plans to solve the whole problem, but there are some plans coming. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say that the, the the council voted to refer this back to the CRC and or refer it to the planning board and CRC, and um, the planning board will probably pick it up on either uh uh um. October 30th or November 20th. So we have to open the hearing by the end of November. And right. the CRC has to as well. I think the, you know, I think there, there will be parallel hearings. And sometimes what will happen is, you know, the CRC, I think some of the members from the council who are in CRC or who may, you know, attend the hearings, you know, one member wanted to maybe expand the boundaries maybe have apartments, allow apartments uh, um, at some locations within the uh, overlay, they questions about park the parking. And so, you know, maybe that the planning board has a few questions about the big why and some of the things we've been talking about. Um, I think there could be some, like I said, maybe some modifications to it. Uh, but, you know, it might, it might be that the planning board thinks that flexible parking is, is fine here because, you know, there really is limited parking elsewhere. You know, no, no one's going to park up on, you know, Amity Street up by Lincoln Ave and walk back down. And, you know, they're not going to park at stop and shop and walk. And so I think, I think, I think there's some things that uh, the planning board in your, and you know, it might be quicker than the CRC, but it will come back and then there'll be a chance to, you know, discuss this. Um, yeah. And I, I'll send the, I'll send the information, the memo and everything that was sent to council. I, I think, yeah, I mean, I, I like this idea of the overlay. I think it, um, I think the board had really good discussions about it and it wasn't, hasty at all and you know it was really deliberate and talked about a lot of options and it's hard to you know say that concisely and let everyone know you know we looked at you know for instance one of the counselors said could we design mixed-use buildings so that they're designed to be used for commercial but could be retrofitted for residential and we had talked about that but is that you know can we actually require that in the zoning to build to a certain building code and i'm not you know i don't I don't know if that's really where we want to go with this. If we want to have mixed use on the first floor, let's just have mixed use on the first floor. And the idea is we're allowing a step back sixth floor. So I, to me, those are the things that may need to be uh, kind of reiterated and then kind of clarified at the planning board and included in a memo back to council just to. Yes, uh, Barry's intending to have something like that flexibility in his project on the second floor, as I recall. Right. But I, I think it's it'd be weird to me to have a zoning regulation that requires building to a certain code level. It just oh, I, that doesn't my comment doesn't translate into believing right, that right. It, we should write the regulation to require what Barry's doing. I mean, we might be able to learn something, and and uh, because these things come before the board, if the board's well informed, we can use our persuasive powers, uh, given the you know in the particular circumstances of a project, to push a developer. In one way or another, uh, it's 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 not you know it's 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 not nothing, but clearly uh, it's it's not a it's not a regulatory obligation either. Fred, Fred? I think Fred's got his hand up again. Oh, my mistake. <laughs> Relate, related to that, Nate, do you remember or does someone else remember? What did, what did the planning board, what did we decide about coming back to the other potential overlay places or other areas to densify? We had put that off for quite a while now, right? Yeah, Until... I, think, I think we can come back to it. Um, you know, there's the downtown design standards, which is going to be picking up in the housing production plan. So I think the planning board can be, or the housing subcommittee could be, um, you know, brought to speed on some of those in the next few months. And then uh, 
Yeah, I think talking about the next few areas in town, I think what's interesting is Mass General Law changed a few years ago. And so part of what's happening with University Drive, uh, it'll only need a majority vote of council to be adopted, not a super majority. Uh, so if there's an eligible location, quote eligible location, a defined term in the state law now, where um, infill or mixed use or housing is appropriate, um, then it, 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 it'll be a simple majority vote to adopt a zoning measure. And you can only, and uh, there's a little few, there's a few more details about it, but uh, for instance, if we're looking at other areas in town and we want to propose an overlay or changing the zoning and we say, say like East Amherst, we think it could become BVC or we do something and we say it's for housing and economic development, it become you know, and the purpose meets something similar to the overlay or what the law states, then it's just a simple majority vote to get it adopted. Yeah. So, you know, that wasn't even a consideration of ours when I was talking about the overlay. I, I wasn't, you know, I was kind of in the back of my mind, but then um, Tom Reedy and some others brought it up after the fact, but um, you know, it, it is interesting. So if, if the planning board is looking at some areas and certain zoning measures, it does just become a simple majority. That would be a decision of uh, KP law or something like that. They would guide on. They would. You would. The town would be advised on that by someone other than the board or you. So, like with the U Drive overlay, the CRC and the planning board, as part of the hearing process, is going to first have to do. As part of the hearing, we'll have to determine if the overlay area is an eligible location according to Mass General Law. And if it's found to be an eligible location, then the vote is just a simple majority. Yeah, yes, yes, I understand. But that determination, I uh, my question was, would we, uh, would the town uh, uh, yeah. seek an opinion from KP Law, and 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 that would be the basis on which we would uh, know which way to go? Yeah, we've already asked one of the attorneys, and they they didn't say yes, but they said, you know based on that we sent them a draft of the overlay and a few things and they said it looks like it would. So, so they have so to give it up for, for an answer. Could, could we ask about these other areas we were considering because- Oh, I think, to be honest, I think all those areas become an eligible location. Because given the, the current objections to this current one, maybe East Amherst wouldn't have a similar pushback because there's no Big, I mean, there's commercial things there, but there's not anything anchored like Big Y, you know, that would mm. maybe elicit the same response. Um, and I guess the other thing I was thinking is it would be good to know. I mean, Nate, you're saying, yeah, they all qualify, but it'd be good to know that for sure before we sort of go through the whole process again, mm. right? Yeah, Karin, I see you have your hand up just quickly. Yeah, I mean, I can't, I mean, I'm saying it does, but I think we'd have to be clear in what the purpose of, say, any zoning changes would be and then what is the geographic area. So, you know, it, so so it, is, it, is it worth trying to map those out a little more carefully? Maybe the subcommittee could do that just right. to get the opinion. Oh, is would this count? Right, you know, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, I feel that still that University Drive, we, we wanted to move there because we saw that as the best place and we didn't want to, we wanted to move. And if we do many things at once, we were just not getting anywhere. I still think University Drive is a perfect place to concentrate. I think probably the clarification wasn't good. And I do agree we have to preserve big why, and there must be a way that we can work on that to assure people that that uh, the conditions for a grocery store of the kind of big why that, that that's a paramount thing in, in the whole plan. There's got to be a way to do that. Well, we could just exclude it from the overlay. Yeah. For example, I think yeah, it's a big I, enough thing. If it's in danger, I would... I, I totally agree. And Karen, I was not at all suggesting we abandon Universe Drive and focus something else. I just mean, as the next thing we're going to do, or at least the last conversation planning board had, was like, oh, in some number of months, we'll bring up the next area it'd be good to know if they fall under that definition for the simple majority or not before we yeah. get. I think eliminating the big wide properties, it would actually be unfortunate for the overlay. So I'd be a proponent of saying like hundred percent of the ground floor has to be non-residential. I mean, honestly, we could even say within 200 to 300 feet of that intersection on the West side, these are the only permitted non-residential uses. And we could, you know, 
basically prescribe that it has to be, you know, that kind of use. And so, okay. I mean, I, I feel like, cause, cause I it was, it would be odd then. I feel like if we eliminated those properties, then how do we then get it down to say another property? It just seems like there's it'd be a hole in the overlay, which I think there's probably, I feel like there's a few ways we could probably address it. Um, well, isn't, isn't that one at least half Hadley and half Amherst? It is, to yes. Some, to give us some sort of justification for why that would be different? Yeah, and I think, well, even the proximity to Route 9, if we wanted to say, be more specific in terms of the only allowed mixed uses or the non-residential uses there would be, I mean, list them out on the use chart that are allowed. And basically we're saying we want, you know, consumer-based retail. Yeah. And you know we're you know we're trying to encourage. And it does raise the question then. Okay, what if it's included and the owner does decide to build a six story, whatever? Big Y goes away some number of months, year and a half. Does Big Y come back? That I mean, that's the big risk, right? Because we can't control any of that. Yeah, we yeah, it's hard to make those assurances. I I said that to council. We can't like guarantee anything, and that's a, like even right now, Big Y. You know, might not you know could leave. I we it's hard yeah. to. I feel like we could try to encourage it to stay or remain with, you know, some, some, you know, some changes to the, to the bylaw, but. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. So uh, if the public hearing is happening, you said either end of October, early November, right? The planning board. I think we should try and have an op-ed before then. I like that idea a lot. Um, um, I'm going to Australia on the 18th of October. I've said that I can participate in uh, um, meetings at this hour because uh, it's morning in, on, in Melbourne the following day. So I, I can do that. Uh, it might be a... Well, I can... Uh, I, uh, my head won't be... Uh, uh, so I'm not... well. I could write an op-ed on the plane, I suppose. That's what I'm saying. We can certainly work on a text yeah. on, on a piece yeah. together outside yeah. of meeting time. We're allowed to do that, right, Nate? We can pass around a document and work on it? I expect so, because it's... Uh, it's yeah, I mean, yeah. I, uh, it's not a conversation. It's a, <laughs> it's a construction. Right. Oh, we're trying to make something. What if, you know, what if just two of us were putting something together? That, that doesn't yeah, matter. but it's on an overlay that the planning board will then be reviewing. Um, I, I mean, a written, uh, an op-ed to send to the Gazette, something like that. Not yeah. not a new proposal. Right. Yeah. I think we should have, we should, we, we should have an argument in writing, have a case. I mean, you, you want to get somebody to approve something. You want to get somebody to give you money. You need to have a case, and the case, the case statement is what we're talking about, and the case statement needs to be um, uh, basically well well constructed, well edited, and uh, and focused. And it's uh, and then uh, once it's written, it shouldn't be changed all the time. It it might be added to a paragraph here and then as time goes by, but we should be able to state the thing clearly. And uh, even if we don't send it to an op we should have something that can quickly be dispatched to whomever is uh, needs to be uh, brought on board, so to speak, or brought up to speed. So I think, uh, and and that's probably something that we can do. It's no, you would contribute, obviously, Nate. You would review it and so forth. But it's you've got a lot to do, and I don't think. Uh, and and you're clearly not in a position to. Uh, I don't think you can't. You can't. Uh, Put put name you, you can't put your name to a statement in the op ed section of the newspaper, can you? As a member of staff, I can't imagine that that would be kosher. No, I'd have so, to be careful doing that. <laughs> so it's down to it's down to us. I mean, yeah. clearly we can, and uh, mm -hmm. and we can do it in their own names. We can do it under a pair or two or three of us or any number of us who wants to yeah. sign. It's uh, the, yeah. I mean, I think as the housing subcommittee, the planning board, the housing trust is thinking about doing that. You know. Kind of more periodically and in with regular frequency, writing op eds or something just on topics, just to keep yeah keep information up. Well, Darcy Dumont, you know, on the Climate Action Committee, she 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 has a regular thing in the paper. She still does. It's a it's a it's a great thing. And I mean, I I've been asked a few times over the years whether I would become a regular contributor to the bulletin, and 
I just <laughs> I didn't have the energy to keep coming up with uh, with something every month uh, or every six weeks or whatever the period was. Okay, um, Karen, is your hand up? I think I will volunteer in the next two to three weeks to take a stab at writing something and then pass it around to okay. us. Um, and if I'm a good boy, uh, Jesse, I'll send you my notes in advance of that. Great, that would be helpful. And then we'll just craft it and either decide to send it to the paper or just have it ready for planning board or to the council or whoever, right? Yeah. Okay, um, and that that sort of <laughs> brings brings us to the next thing I was going to bring up, which is again the definition that we've worked up on student housing. Everybody ready to shift topics? More to talk about? Yeah. Um, my announcement on that front is that I've been totally overwhelmed with the beginning of the semester and my new jobs, so I've made zero progress on writing up sort of a justification for the student definition that I thought was needed. That was uh, when we last met, we thought we all thought that would be a good idea to sort of present it with some rationale and not to make it clear that it's uh, not intended to be a negative definition or to be used in any particular way, just as information gathering. But again, I've made no progress on that front. I have a question. Yeah. Um... And I think this is a question for you, Nate, uh, or but it's also for everybody. Um, uh, we, when we discussed this last time, we uh, had this view that this town is uh, an, an education town. That's the main industry. Uh, that means as we've got more than our share of students, a share. I mean, we we have an abundance of students, um, and we'll always will have. That's the nature of being Amherst. Um, and it would seem appropriate that we would have a definition for a student home, um, and and uh, and we don't. So why don't we? Um, and we didn't. I didn't move my thinking beyond that. But my question, Nate, would be uh, at least, and and Jesse, for the moment, if we're going to write something, another kind of argument for doing this, um, uh, are there? Um, views, Nate, or uh, uh, opinions that are antithetical to the proposition that we should uh, have a definition of a student home? Are there people who don't think that's a good idea? Um, and if there are, do you know why? Is there a, is, uh, is, are there a set of concerns, arguments, uh, and so forth against having a, a definition of a student home? Are we likely to fight? Uh, is, is is resistance so likely? Uh, uh, yeah, I think I think it was I think it was discussed a little bit when the new rental registration um, bylaw was being updated, and they decided not to. I think um, you know for a few reasons. Some of it might be you know what, how do you define student? Uh, what's the how do you actually enforce it or investigate it or confirm it? And so. You know, from a maybe from an enforcement standpoint, they found you know the building commissioner thought it could be problematic or just tricky. You know, a little complicated. <clears throat> I'm not. You know, I sometimes um, some people feel really strongly that zoning and land use regulation regulations shouldn't get into the interior of a of a of a building in terms of occupants or users. And so, you know, I think there's probably. You know, I think some people will probably say it's an important thing to have, and others might say, right, that it's overreaching. Um, so I don't, I don't, I haven't heard, you know, I think maybe if this is discussed more um, broadly and with the planning board too, there might be some more comments, but I think it is interesting, like we said, to have a, kind of some data collection um, mechanism. And so, uh, you know, the rental piece is one, but it's, there's a lot of gaps. Um, you know, we're with with the housing production plan. We're have we're hoping the consultant can talk to UMass about some information. But yeah, I mean, I think there's what we talked about having this try to be part of the rental process and annually be updated. I mean, it'll be voluntary, but it, I feel like it can become something that would be um, it's easy to complete. And if you know, if it's, I feel like if it's accepted, a good definition. I think it would be 
it's, I don't want to say it's harmless, but I think it would be something that people would acknowledge. And so, um, but yeah, I don't know. I, 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 it goes back and forth in terms of, I think the question is really what, what are we doing with it? Right. What's the definition and then why? Yeah. You have it. yeah. yeah. Because I, you I, should... have... Sorry, I, have, sorry. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't heard that stated that way, but I can easily imagine that counter argument of, of that it's, it will only be used to essentially discriminate somehow against students. Right. Um, like, I, I don't think that's any of our intention, but I think that's what will come out, no matter how much we couch it as the alternative. Um, but we'll see, right? Yeah, we're meeting Friday, right, Jesse? Is... Yeah. So, yeah, so I was just gonna say that as well, just update you all. I'm meeting with Nate and Rob and Chris. Did Chris actually reply? Oh no, Chris is done by Friday. Right? Actually, it'll be your last day, so it'll be one of our last meetings. Okay, yeah. so so we're, we're gonna meet to discuss uh, just different aspects of this and if it can be added to the rental registry without approval or whatever, just to, to discuss these issues with staff. Um, so I can report on that to you all at, at our next meeting. Mm. Um, yeah. What else? Any other comments about the definition where that's at? Um, uh, I can't, can you bring it up again, Jesse? The actual text? Yes, where we are. Sure. Just to remind us, I think that it would be good to keep it in front of us for a moment. Um, because I think you have a more recent one than the uh, a, 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 an edited version of the uh, um, College Station um, yeah, definition. Right. We, we had edited it slightly. Yeah. yeah so. uh, sorry, I had it on my laptop. Let me mm -hmm. just get it on the screen. <clears throat> yes, because we, we, I, I think there's also, but while you're looking, I'll just say that there's been some discussion in the rental bylaw about nu nuisance homes and so forth. So, uh, and and there's clearly, or apparently, a, a clear way of defining that. It has to do with, you know, three, uh, either once you've had three citations in a year, or if you move, if, if you go to a fourth, Anyway, this has to do with the number of uh, complaints or whatever the technical term for complaint is on a given house. It becomes a nuisance house, so that's uh, that's pretty easy to define. Whereas I can see the question is, what is a student? How do you define the student? Um, uh, and is 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 something that would need to be dealt with? It could be. Uh, and, and I suppose another question is, uh, is this a definition that's going to be um, uh, is it going to be self-declared or is it going to be such that it can be um, uh, you know um, I don't know how that it, 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 it could it, it's that the Bible defines it in a way that it uh, it can be uh, adjudged, I guess is the word. Yeah, yeah, um, I, yeah, I, I can't see how it would be anything but sort of not voluntary, but uh, I don't know how it could be ever enforced to find that information. Even if yeah. we said to get a permit, you have to answer these questions. Someone could still not answer them accurately, right? So. Well, I guess you know we uh, I could we could uh, call again College Station and talk to their one of their people with a specific uh, uh, in, uh, with a, with that specific question. How do they uh, how do they enforce this? Why do they enforce this? How important is uh, this definition to their um, uh, to the management of their town? That sort of thing. Yeah. And I, if we spent uh, Fifteen or twenty minutes, uh, just focused on that particular line of inquiry. I mean, when I talked to them, I had a much broader line of inquiry, and I talked sure, about all sorts of other it. things. But this, uh, that could be one way of uh, yeah, getting a little yeah, clearer was, about why we care. 
I was thinking about this the last few weeks as I just, you know, ride my bike back and forth between campus and here, you know, the number of houses that have more than four cars regularly parked in the driveway. Yeah. Um, you know, there is existing bylaw saying no more than four unrelated. Clearly it's happening all over town. Right. Hmm. And so however we try and capture that this information, if it's a student rental, it'll be the same issue. Those landlords who are willing to not respect the bylaw will still not respect whatever we're trying to gather, but maybe it'll be 70% accurate. So, you know, something like that. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how we could do much better than that without, without a more frequent inspection. And we all know that has different issues, right? Um, but yeah. So did you write the, the paragraph of the sentence, the residents of a student home share living expenses and may live and cook as a single housekeeping unit? No, this this was right that out of was, there. That was in there, huh? And we had taken out, um, there was this, I could pull up the other one. that We had pulled out basically one sentence from their definition. Yeah. That's the only edit we made. Um, yes, okay. Well, uh, that's, uh, that's. Um, yeah. And as you can see, I started adding some notes, but I never got back to it to try and mm -hmm. write anything up. Well, I'm, uh my life will open up a little bit uh as november comes um i've finished my uh, habitat three house development which is consuming me through the summer and then at the same time my daughter's house which i've been doing a, a large amount of uh, renovation work in today i spent a good portion of the morning jackhammering out the, the sort of concrete slab so i'm 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 definitely ready to be done with this. But so uh, and then I go to Australia and when I get back uh, in uh, the second week of November, I think I'll have I'll have more time. Um, I know I'll have more time. Uh, uh, yeah. So I, I, is, I, I expect to have more energy for these things also November, December. So, yeah. <clears throat> OK, well, thank you for bringing that up. It's helpful just to keep reading it and uh, uh, where did this student def I, I missed a lot of meetings, so there's oh, a lot yeah. of people. Where did this Sorry, Karen, I can send that. come from? This was from uh, State College, who's had this oh, definition. Right. Sorry, I said College Station. I That's in Texas. I, I mixed up two towns. Uh, they've had this on their, I don't know if it's a bylaw or whatever their regulation is called, around rental properties for quite a few years, I think. Yep. Um, and we took their language directly and just tweaked it very slightly. There was one additional sentence we removed. Um, and the rationale for that, Karen, was it has withheld scrutiny by that uh, town. And we felt like that probably meant it's held up to some contests. So it might be a good starting point for us. Yeah. like it. I'll send it to you so you can think about it more also. Hmm. Well, if we are moving forward with this, I think we should be um, uh, aware of the uh, concerns that people have and possibly the some of the principal um, individuals who have these concerns that we could uh, discuss them with to understand them better. Um, you mean counselors? Do you mean who, who well, do you I don't know. Of? I'd probably start with uh, people on the CRC who've been reviewing the uh, the rental bylaw. Uh, yeah. I know Pat DeAngelis pretty well. I I I, I know. Uh, I think um, Pam Rooney has been on the CRC. Is that correct? Yeah. I know Pam pretty well, so I'd probably just call them and say, Pam, we're or Pat, we're thinking about this. Um, what, what should we know? <laughs> yeah. So is it, is it, it's a town, town politics question, I guess. Is it appropriate for me or one of us to bring this to CRC and say, Hey, we're thinking of this. What's, you know, can we discuss this? What is, what do you all think about this approach? Yeah. Excuse maybe as a, um, you know, at a planning board meeting during the report, you could say, you know, here's what we've discussed. And then, you know, um, maybe have the planning board then discuss it or vote on bringing that to CRC. I think that's the way okay. I would do it. Okay. Yeah, it's interesting. I was just looking, I, the way um, 
State College does it now. They require like a license for a student house. And it's really similar to like with well, a rental registration. So I don't know. It's kind of interesting to me seeing that is, you know, we're already collecting a fair amount of information about rentals. And if we, you know, the hope was to hire some code enforcement officers to then do inspections. And so you know, I feel like at some point we're going to be get kind of collecting similar information. And so it's not, it's not, to me, it's not too out of bounds here to ask some of the, some of the, you know, I feel like there's probably some other questions that could be asked or I'm not sure what the rental permit will ask, but you know, it becomes to me, it's a nice, uh, like I said, a nice data collection piece. Um, I mean, again, I'm hoping that's the direction this is all going to be yeah. that kind of system. Yeah, Bruce. Um, just uh, because I have, we've been using the term student home, right? Not student house. Is that, uh, do I recall correctly? Uh, um, yeah, we have it as student home. Yes, I think we should stick with that. I think uh, it's it's a, it's a little more personable, friendly, what have you. Is it, do people agree with that or 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 not? Karen does. Yeah. Karen, I should say. I, I agree. Brent? Um, Jess, could you uh, 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 send that around to the uh you know the the uh, subcommittee um yep. cuz i'm i was looking at it and i'm thinking well what happens if it's a three family for example it's not clear um uh, sure it starts it with say, one. you know if one out of the three is a student is that should should that be taken note of as a uh, it, that's it. It doesn't come across clearly to me. So I'm just going to paste that text into the email that Nate just sent us. Okay, you've got it. So we can look at that and and discuss any edits, potential edits next time as well. Okay, um, Nate, any update for us to think about with the ADU legislation or not yet? Not yet. The state had, you know, um, published a web page, but it's pretty minimal. I think the, uh, um, but I did get an email saying that they were hoping to have, I think in the next few weeks, like a technical guidance document, which to me becomes more important, you know, Amherst was already allowing ADU. So to me, it becomes, you know, the way the legislation is written is like, you know, can you allow more than one? If so, how, you know, can you require owner occupancy if more than one, um, uh, you know, what are the, uh, can, if you have more than one, can you have it be bigger than the 900? And so, you know, when I attended this workshop, they were saying that basically every community has to allow one that meets the state definition. And if we already have some that are built on a property, they're not, they're, then they're different than the state definition. So they could add another one. And so those are like the, those are the things that to me, we have to figure out because I think other, you know, if at the very least we would just take, I feel like we would strike two things from our bylaw. One is the owner occupancy requirement. One is this um, special permit. And then the rest, maybe we change the size. And so then the rest of the bylaws all could be, I think is pretty compliant, but I feel like because of, you know, some of these little, these little technical pieces, we have to, I feel like we should probably address it. You know, like, you know, do we allow multiple ADUs on a property? And I think, you know, is that, I think that's something to consider. Do we limit the number? Do we have a, a lot area or some, you know, some, something, um, you know, I don't, I, you know, it's kind of interesting to me to think like, would someone buy a property and put on three ADUs instead of doing, you know, it's like instead of doing a townhouse, they do three ADUs. I don't, I don't know. It just seems like a weird, yeah, weird thing. But I don't know if people are going to game the system that way or not. Probably not enough to matter. Yeah, Jesse, um, I went to the North Amos. Oh, sorry, the District One Neighborhood Association uh, semi-annual meeting on Sunday. 
uh, where our two councillors uh, kind of talk about what's going on for the neighbourhood and so forth. Um, uh, Mindy Dome was there uh, toward the end, and this was a brief discussion about this. And uh, um, I don't was either she or one of the councillors there mentioned that uh, that she and Joe Comerford were were not unaware of this as it was going through, and they. Uh, um, so the, the 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 first question we had when <laughs> way back when we first heard of this was, what were Mindy and Joe doing, and did this um, were they blindsided by this? Well, I think uh, the answer is no, they weren't blindsided by it, but they weren't able to uh, um, uh, do much uh, to cause Amos to be given some kind of special status so far as the owner occupancy part of it was concerned. And so then the question is. Well, is there any prospect of a oh, what was the word? Is some kind of special provision that Amos could be given? And uh, I recall that the sense of the room was that that wasn't going to happen, or that that would be difficult, or that was not likely to be some uh, thing that we would imagine or should be imagining as a possibility. I bad. think I've got that right, but if if. Uh, if we do talk to Mindy, if she comes, at least uh, we'll have uh, we can we can start from that understanding. Sure. So the consensus on that and inviting her, I thought, was that we should wait to see how things shake out a little bit. Yeah. Sure. I mean, as I told you, her aide said she'd be happy to come join us, but then I thought we decided let's wait a couple months. I think so. See. Yes, and, and you know, her aide would be fine too. I don't think we need Mindy all the time. She's very. She gets around that woman. She's great. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, anything else? Anyone has a burning desire to discuss tonight? Nothing springing to mind. Uh, oh, uh, I skipped over our minutes, which I don't have prepared. So there's no minutes to vote on. Just I didn't see any, so I assumed that was the case. <laughs> <laughs> I'll aim for next one. Um, Jesse, can I ask you? You said you're in the uh, Vice Chancellor's office. I mean, yeah, uh, so so I, I've been. Can you tell us a little bit about your circumstance? Sure. Um, it, yes. I am 70% effort in the Vice Chancellor for Research and Engagement. So I'm an Associate Vice Chancellor for Research Support, is my technically my title. And so I'm really focusing on our sponsored research effort of, for all of UMass mm. and working on sort of figuring out how to make things more efficient and easier for faculty to apply for more grants and to be more successful with the grants that we bring in. Golly. And you're doing this as well as your own research, as well as teaching? So, so I'll uh, just my own lab, but not my other responsibilities. So, so no yes. teaching at the moment? Uh, well, currently, yes, because it was so close to the semester when this got arranged, but after the fall i won't be teaching sure. okay thank you congratulations it really doesn't interface with any of the housing <laughs> issue but thanks i think we'll see yeah <laughs> definitely different different world uh, well oh. jesse do you then ever get um the chancellor's ear <laughs> yes but but i have to be very careful about you know what hat i'm wearing when so yeah he wants to keep his job I mean, you should keep want to keep your job. It's you. I didn't mean it the way that came out. <laughs> right, no, I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. <clears throat> uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I guess then any unanticipated items I'm supposed to ask for, which I think, well, none for me. Um, Jesse, I I volunteered to help write these these minutes, but I missed the whole first part. Apparently, the six minutes. Um, I'll, I'll try to you could do, you do it tonight. So that'd be wonderful. Uh, okay. Oh, the six minutes. So it is recorded. So, so nothing, and nothing happened. I think, I don't know what happened in six minutes, but, uh, I can help. If you do what you were here for, I can add the beginning part How about that. Okay. I think the first six minutes, uh, we, we launched immediately into the, uh, council's discussion of the overlay. See, and that uh, was very interesting, but yes. I guess that's what was in the paper, right? The well, the... Fred's Fred opened that conversation by saying, um, 
he was uh, alarmed that the uh, well, Fred can say what he said, <laughs> but it 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 uh, set the tone for certainly the next six minutes of conversation. Okay, and, I th um, yeah, I think I think I understand. Yeah, thank you. So one thing, um, <clears throat> you know, in terms of uh, what could be the focus of the planning board or housing subcommittee. You know, in the past, the planning department and, and others would propose zoning amendments. And if they didn't pass, sometimes they were just, you know, we'd move on to the next one. But, uh, you know, in the last 10 or 15 years, we proposed, you know, a few different things related to housing. And one was an overlay um, on the existing apartment complexes to allow them to redevelop at a certain density by uh, site plan review instead of special permit to try to encourage you know, infill or, or things. And it didn't, it, you know, there was a lot of discussion and it, it, it didn't, um, it didn't pass at town meeting, but I think that, you know, there's a few apartment complexes that have already redeveloped or, you know, they're getting to the point where they're old enough where they need to start putting in some major capital money. And I know there's one or two where every once in a while a property manager will say, Oh, they, they might be, might be interested in doing something. And I've talked to a few and some aren't, but I don't know. I, to me, it's like, they can redevelop right now as a non-conforming use through the zoning board as a special permit. But the idea with this overlay like 10 years ago was to, you know, have some standards, but make it site plan review, uh, you know, in that way to try to encourage it. So, you know, like Puffton Village and, and others, uh, and I think some of it was in response to the housing market study. Maybe it was actually around the housing market study said, you know, you have to have a density of like three or four times what's there to make it work financially and phasing and everything. And I don't know, I, I sometimes I still think that's, it could be worth considering just because, you know, there might be a few properties that would take advantage of it if it's, if it's available. And so I don't, you know, it could be something we just discussed and I could yeah. find the old amendment, but, yeah. you know, so, like sorry, I said, it could be sorry. Simplify that for me, Nate, you're saying not so, to make an overlay. But... Yeah. So right now the existing apartment complexes, a lot of them were permitted by special permit or they're per they built. And then the town changed the zoning. So a lot of them can't be built now anymore. Essentially they're non-conforming. Okay. So as a non-conforming use, you could expand or you know rebuild as long as the ZBA finds it's not more detrimental to the neighborhood through a special permit process. But it's it's kind of tricky. It's a risk. Like you wouldn't, you know, it's a pretty discretionary permit and you have to make a a, a case. So the town, I think it was after the housing market study, uh, the develop the consultant was saying, you know, usually you'd want to see a three to four to five increase in density to encourage a kind of a wholesale teardown of an apartment complex because they have to, you know, the phasing and financing and taking units offline. So the town had proposed an overlay over existing apartment complexes. So it like floated all over different apartment complexes allowing this denser redevelopment by site plan review just to make the permitting easier. I can't, I can't remember if there are any other incentives, but it didn't, it does. You know, I think it generated a lot of discussion. It wasn't passed, but I think it's, to me, it's maybe something worth picking up again, just to see if we could encourage some good. I think uh, particularly if uh, you know, the, 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 the fact that we've been building bigger buildings in recent years, and I think people are gradually coming to understand that there's a benefit to that, particularly if it's done in certain places. Um, uh, the uh, when the university apartments uh, uh, that's the the North Village, the former North Village, I think it was next to Puffton Village up my end of town. Uh, they tore it all down and they rebuilt it and they uh, they rebuilt it the same. Instantly, I thought, my God, what a waste! You know, they could have had. Uh, it's it's a perfectly reasonable spot to have four and five story buildings because it's a great big, uh, a, 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 a a great big development uh, and it was you know there's 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 a thousand or more uh, bedrooms there that, that that could be there that aren't and uh, and you know if we need eight thousand <laughs> you know 10 or 15 percent of our problem could have been solved uh, or more 20 percent of our problem could have been solved on that site well, uh, so like, what, like what that we're talking about um and nate so in that scenario does each one have to sort of get its own overlay district 
Or no, it would be, it would be it like, well, they're not contiguous. We can say yeah. this plot, this plot, this plot. Be like yeah. the farmland, you know, the old farmland overlay, which took certain farms and uh, right across town, and they weren't continuous. They were just a a a definable type of parcel, and then all of those definable types of parcels were treated uh, by that farmland protection overlay. Yeah, and I think you know, we have some design guidelines or dimensional standards, massing standards, and you know, so I yeah, I don't know, I forget how carefully crafted it was previously, but. Yeah, we could I, I think we should definitely revisit that. That to me feels like low hanging fruit, right? Because it's already that use. So I, I could see yeah. much less. Uh, and we can use that uh, that example of North Village uh, as a as what was there, what's there now, and what could have been there. So so Nate, if you could send that around to us, the old one, the old version that didn't pass, and then maybe we can discuss that yeah. at the next meeting. Yeah, I mean, for instance, I spoke with the owner of Colonial Village and, you know, whenever we've had consultants or developers, they look at Colonial Village and they say, wow, there's a lot of odd space there, the kind of layout of road and parking building. <clears throat> you know, it was done when it was done, it was probably met, you know, kind of what a standard was or, but now, you know, I look at it like, wow, you could even just create almost like another grid of streets and do like three-story townhouses and really densify. And But the owner was saying it is tricky, you know, the loss of revenue, if you take a unit off line to build, it's like three years of lost revenue from the time you start a project before you get someone in. And so, you know, there, there's a lot to it. I don't, I don't think everyone would take advantage of it, but I feel like, like I said, there's one or two property owners every once in a while, I guess emails the town and asks like oh remember when you talked about this and so you know well like, Nate the point is with that university uh, apartments thing is that they did uh, do it they I, did they did I, I tear know. down the buildings and they did build the new buildings and right. and they could have done something that was so much more beneficial to the town and to them presumably to themselves because they were already biting that bullet so the bullet has been bitten once I think it, it, it ceases to be a uh, speculative at this point. We, we we have an example of it happening and we have an example of it happening of not happening to uh, an optimal degree. So I think uh, that is um, that that should uh, fuel the argument. Uh, uh, of, were there restrictions in North Village to make it uh, the way it turned out? To read it's just the, just the existing restrictions that Nate's talking about uh, um enabling so then uh, enabling them to be superseded with something more appropriate uh, you know currently more appropriate yeah i mean it could have been cost they try to kept maybe kept the same feel and kind of atmosphere as what was there before but you know it's interesting to me if it's two stories could most of them been three and then on the interior been four and what if you you know, double the density without really changing it much. I mean, I, you know, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't really know all those details, but I, yeah, I mean, even like, you know, some of the apartment complexes just have these curvilinear driveways with parking off of them. And then they have buildings, but they have all this odd grass space, but that's not used for anything, right? It's just the whole layout is inefficient in terms of, you know, density and then who uses the space, right? It's not big enough to, do anything really, but it has to get maintained. And so it's like, if it was redeveloped, could you still have open space, but have more density uh, and have it all be workable? Yeah. Okay. On the you agenda. can put that kind of thing into uh, design standards too, right? You could say, if there's open space, it has to be sort of useful. Uh, that could all be in design standards. Mm -hmm. I, right. This is the first time I'm looking at those high rises, those student things favorably. I always thought, what an eyesore, what did the university do? And now I think, wow, great. They've got all these floors of students packed on top of each other. Go ahead, Fred. Uh, yeah, I was just curious. Uh, North Village, isn't that owned by UMass there, and therefore... Um, state property and exempt from the Amherst zoning bylaw. Am I? I am think I you wrong? might be correct. 
So they yeah, could I think they could have increased that density, you know, even without an overlay. And I, I agree with uh Bruce's observation entirely. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that was interesting. Lots of interesting topics. Uh, thank you very much, Jesse. Thank you, Nate. All right. Thanks, everyone. Uh, uh, see you October 23rd, same time. Uh, possibly. We'll see. Uh, if you if you know you can't, let, why don't you let me know? Because we're tight on numbers, right? Okay. Uh, October 23rd. I will be on my way back from a code panel meeting in uh, uh, south of Los Angeles. Okay. I I have to see how the time zones work and whether I can. Uh, sure. Uh, uh, what about so, Karen? Are you available for October twenty third? Oh, Bruce, you're, that's when you're you're. Recently arriving to Australia, right? Yeah. Uh, yes, it's not going to be a good time because I've I've I will have just got there, so I'm I'm probably going to be sleeping in to uh, sure. manage the time change. So. Okay. The, so, well, we have planning. We have regular planning board the week before and the week after that. So. No, I think the week before we we don't didn't we just didn't we didn't I hear that that was cancelled for some reason? Oh, was it the sixteenth? Oh no, no, I beg your pardon. Sorry, that was the the first of the month. The Rosh Hashanah the conflict was cancelled. Yeah, I'm sorry, I got you. I think yep. we have we do. Oh, no. I had put us on the twenty third in case that worked. Then we have planning board the thirtieth. Then we have planning board the sixth. <laughs> So, well, we have a uh, oh, I didn't. So the thirtieth would be the the fifth week, the fifth Wednesday of the month, right? Yeah, but I thought. Uh, I mean, I put it on my and, calendar from what I'm saying. Oh, okay. We should do that. Yes, I've never been able to yeah, put these planning board meetings on my calendar because I I haven't been able to figure out a formula that deals with fifth Wednesdays. Right. Like, um, you're how about probably the cleverer than me. November thirteenth. Yes, I'll be back for that. Okay, let's let's if we can all pencil that in, in case the twenty third does not work. I just don't want us to get too lackadaisical. Is Janet no longer part of this? She is. Well, she's not officially a member. She and she just couldn't make it tonight, but she has joined us for every other time, and she plans to continue joining us. Okay, so let's pencil in November 13th. And I will ask you all a few days before the, what was it, 23rd? If we can do it, if we can't, not a problem, we'll just wait till the 13th. Yes, I think you should assume that I can't because I'll just be uh, um, recovering, so to speak. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I, I, I will be, I checked, I will definitely be in transit until okay. approximately so, mid, midnight of the 23rd. So I will- 23rd yeah, is I, out. I'm definitely so out. That's fine. Let's, we'll plan on November 13th, and at least a week before then, I'm going to send you a couple of documents for input. Okay. Good. So in the meantime, that um, the two of you doing that op-ed, that's probably- one of the important things to get. Yeah, so that's one of the things I'm talking about. I'll make a stab. Bruce is going to send me some notes, and then I'll send it to all of us for input. And then I'm also going to work on the justification around the housing definition. Just right. to help deliver that appropriately. Yeah, yeah, good. I really like this idea that Nate brought up about increasing density in the already apartments. But anyway, let's not start the conversation over. Have a good night. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.